Hello everybody, welcome to worship today at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Today we are going to be taking a look at a familiar parable. We're going to be taking a look at the parable of the sower and the seed. It's a powerful parable about God's holy word. And so we're going to spend some time reviewing the doctrine of the word of God Holy Scripture, and especially how that applies to us, because the parable that Jesus teaches us is about how the Word of God comes to us and how we receive it, and how we hear and learn and put it into practice. So we're going to be spending some time thinking that through as we study the doctrine of the Word and the parable of the sower and the seed. It's a good day to be in God's house. I'm glad that you're with us. We will see you in worship in just a minute. God's Word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever to spread its light from age to age shall be our chief end. Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With humble hearts, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today comes from Psalm 119, the first 16 verses. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart 
that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips, I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Our second scripture lesson is from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at the 10th verse. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 8, beginning at the fourth verse. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and it was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on the rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Now his disciples asked him what this parable meant. And he said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. This is the word of our God. We now join together in confessing the Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. steadfast in your word Curb those who by deceit or sword would seek to overthrow your son and to destroy what he has done Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of Lords alone. Defend your Christendom that we may sing your praise eternally. Oh, comfort this world send peace and unity on earth support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to The Gospel of Luke begins the parable of the sower and the seed with a triple emphasis on sowing. Literally, it says, a sower went out to sow his seeds. As he was sowing, there's a triple emphasis on that. Jesus teaches us that the seed that is being sown is the word of God. And of course, Jesus himself is the sower who went out to sow his seed, and he was sowing. Jesus is not stingy, but he's extremely generous with his word when he sows his word in your heart and in your life. Through the Holy Christian Church, Jesus is actively, right now, sowing the seed of his word in every nation on the earth, including our congregation, including this video, including into your heart. The goal is that everyone will hear and listen and believe that he is the savior of the world, the one God sent to rescue us from our sin. The seed that Jesus sows 
is the word of God. And that word has the power to create a harvest. The word of God, of course, is the Bible. It's the Holy Scriptures. We know and we believe and we confess that the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, is inspired and that it's inerrant. It truly is the words of God to us. And God uses His Word. He works through His Word to create faith, to soften hearts, to open eyes. His Word is clear. And it's understandable, and it is effective, and it is powerful. When you think about the Word of God, remember that it comes to us in two ways. The law and the gospel. The law and the gospel must be clearly defined and always separated from each other. It's hard to imagine two other words that are more important in all of theology. The law and the gospel. Key words, crucial words to understand to understand scripture and the doctrines of the church. So let's start with the law of God a part of God's holy word. The law of God is powerful, and its primary purpose is to expose your sin. It works to convict you of your rebellion and immorality and disobedience. It is meant to lead you to repentance, and sometimes the law of God is painful in our lives. It can create guilt and shame, but that's what it's meant to do. The law of God is crystal clear in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the law of God, and those commandments teach you what is right and wrong, good and evil, truth from error. The law of God, the Ten Commandments, shows you your sins. Do you remember the law of God? Do you remember those commandments? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And the ninth and the tenth commandments, thou shalt not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. These commandments show you where you have sinned, where you have disobeyed the law of God, where you have sinned against God and against other people. The law of God reveals to you your sin. It exposes it. It shows you the depth and the corruption of sin in your life, in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions, even in the things you should have done but you failed to do. The law of God, it creates guilt. It always condemns and accuses And it declares that you will die in your sin. The law of God is not good news. It's harsh. It is extremely powerful. The Bible describes the law of God as a fire that consumes us. It's described as a hammer that crushes rocks like our hard heart, and our stubborn pride. The law of God has the power to expose your sin and to convict you and to condemn you. 
but it has no power whatsoever to heal you, to forgive you, or to give you life. For healing and forgiveness and life, you need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is the good news that your sins are forgiven because of the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than the law of God. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us that Jesus, the Son of God, came into the world to do the work of salvation for us. The work that we could not do. He is the one God sent for you. Jesus lived a perfect life for you under the law of God, under those Ten Commandments. And he obeyed them perfectly every moment of every day in his thoughts, his words, and his actions. And then he took up the judgment and the guilt and the shame and the condemnation that the law throws on us, that we deserve. Jesus took all that himself, upon himself, and he dies on a cross. Everything Jesus did, he did for you. He did in your place. That's good news. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel, this good news about Jesus, it is the power of God that brings salvation to you and all people. It is the power of God to forgive sins, to create faith, to give eternal life. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is far greater than the law of God. The gospel is about Jesus and his work of salvation for us. God's word the seed that is sown comes to us in two ways, the law and the gospel. It's very important that you understand and can distinguish between the law and the gospel. The parable that Jesus taught, that sower and the seed, teaches us that Jesus is continually sowing the seed of his word in your life. And in your heart, Jesus is continually sowing the seeds of the law, which exposes your sin and leads you to repentance. And then the powerful gospel that forgives your sins, comforts you, heals you and gives you eternal life. God is always working his word of law and gospel into your life. Always remember that the gospel is greater than the law of God. But we all know, and Jesus taught us, that God's word doesn't always produce faith. That's because people can resist the word of God and turn away from it. You heard it today in the parable. In the parable, three of the four soils failed. The word was lost in the hearts of three of the four examples that Jesus used. No harvest was produced. That's a 75% failure rate. But it's important to know that it's not the word of God that failed, but the heart of the person that failed. That's what Jesus is teaching us in this parable. He's teaching us that how you listen to the word of God 
is very important. There are many, many things that can take the word of God away from you and make it unproductive. Many things can distract you and cause the word to not be powerful in your life. Jesus highlights a couple of three examples. He talks about Satan and his depraved demon stealing the word from you. That's the hard path. He talks about separating yourself from Christ and his word when you suffer trials and temptations or persecution, the pleasures of this world, the rocky path. And he also talks about being distracted by the world and its ways, maybe even persecution, the thorny path. In all three of these examples, the same exact gospel is being proclaimed. Jesus is sowing the seed of the same word, the law and the gospel, in everyone's life. But it has different effects on different people. The gospel is ultimately rejected, and people lose their way and their faith, and they have forfeited eternal salvation. That's hard to say, and it's even hard to think about, especially if we know people in our lives that are acting that way. But right now, be careful that it's not happening to you. This is a strong warning to you to pay careful attention how you listen and respond to the law of God and to the gospel of Christ. Let the law do its work. Let the gospel heal you and forgive you. Jesus teaches us that we are to hear the word of God and to retain it. Right after this parable in the biblical text, Jesus continues to teach about hearing the word of God. In that chapter in Luke, if you were going to keep going and read it, which I encourage you to do, he says that we are to consider carefully how you listen to the word. That's really a, um, a, a, an explanation of the entire parable. Consider carefully how you listen to the word. And then later on in the chapter, Jesus says, his mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. The good soil is the person who takes hold of the word of God keeps it in their heart, and puts it into practice. The good soil does consider carefully how they listen to the word. It means that you're eager to hear the word, to learn it, to understand it. What God teaches you in Holy Scriptures is important to you. And you want to know as much about it as you can and put it into practice in your life. The Holy Spirit creates a desire within you to be biblically literate and doctrinally sound. The Holy Spirit at work within you creates a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. You see, that's the nature of faith. It draws you to Christ and his word. Really, when you think about it, the only ones that want you to stay away from Christ and his word is Satan, your sinful nature, and the world. Remember how Martin Luther says it in the small catechism? We should fear and love God that we do not despise preaching or his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn it. That would be a good explanation of this parable, that we hold it sacred 
And we, we gladly hear it and learn it. So one of the things that this parable does is it calls you to, to evaluate yourself. Take an honest look at what your attitude is towards the word of God. Is your heart hard or soft when it comes to God's law? Do you believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know that your sins are forgiven and that you belong to God? Do you have that assurance that you belong to him? Your sins are gone. You have peace with God and you will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. Are you eager to hear the word, to retain it, and to, by persevering, produce a crop? like Jesus talks about. Perseverance in God's word. That's what this parable is all about. Abiding in Christ, abiding in his word. Hearing and understanding and properly responding to the law and the gospel. Jesus is the sower. And he is continually sowing his seed, both law and gospel, in your life. He is continually at work bringing you his word, both law and gospel. But the gospel is always greater than the law. So put it in your ears. Let it be planted in your heart. He has given you a plethora of ways to learn and study and understand his word. So the question today is, how do you hear and retain the word of God? How do you hear and retain the word of God? Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have sown the seed of your word into our hearts. We ask for good soil that is a heart that intentionally hears and retains your word. Allow your law to work in our hearts to convict us of sin. Lead us to repentance and turn us away from rebellion. Grant us faith in the gospel, trusting that our sins are forgiven and that we belong to you through faith alone and by your grace alone. Help us to understand Holy Scripture and give us a hunger and thirst to become ever more biblically literate and doctrinally sound disciples. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. See you next week in worship. God alone is my rock. He is my I am not forsaken God alone is my rock He is my salvation He is my fortress I will not be shaken God alone is my rock He is my salvation He is my fortress I am not my salvation. He is my fortress.
Cause I will not be shaken My Lord is sure My Lord is strong Standing on his word salvation he is my fortress I am not forsaken God alone is my rock he is my salvation he is my fortress I will not be shaken I may stumble I may salvation he is my fortress i am not forsaken god alone is my rock he is my salvation he is my fortress i will not be shaken god alone is my rock he is my salvation he is my fortress i am not forsaken god alone is my rock, he is my salvation, he is my fortress, I will not be shaken, I will not be shaken.